Yeah, Cricket West Indies and the West Indies Players Association signing a memorandum of understanding here on the Sports Mic Zone within the last 45 minutes. And the MOU to run from the 30th, or may that the 1st of October 2023 to the 30th of September 2027. We've already heard from the contingent from Cricket West Indies. We'll now hear from the contingent from the West Indies Players Association led by the President Waver Hines and alongside him the Honorary Secretary uh, Wayne Lewis. Uh, gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have you on the Sports Mag Zone. Um, Waver, I listened to your presentation earlier, quite meticulous, and one of the things I noticed you mentioned was the fact that you consulted a number of players in this process. Why do you feel it was so important for you to make that point? Well, it is, it is called the West Indies Players Association, so it's owned and run by the players. Of course, they have hired a, a management team, and of course, there's a board of directors. So it's always good to be inclusive and to make sure that they are integral in the decision-making process. And while we are occupying the, the directorship, we think it is very important because they are the practitioners. They are on the ground. They are moving around. They sometimes have a lot more experience as, as to the day-to-day -day activities, being that they are traveling around the world. As I said, the, the landscape has changed, so the calendar year remains at 12 months, but there are multiple competitions around the world. We, are, we see where we're playing test cricket in Australia, and I want to say all the best to the West Indies team in Australia. They are certainly representing themselves well, given what they have and how far they are, the, develop, the developmental curve. But there are a lot of T20 competitions going on in South Africa, in Dubai, all of us, and we have West Indians who are participating in that. So we are mindful of those things, so we want to get their input as to what is the best fit for the MOU so that they can participate in West Indies cricket as well as going to earn their living outside of West Indies. So from your standpoint, you would be surprised if players following the signing of this MOU um, came out as detractors in any way? Well, um, I, if I stand here after 22 years and say that I'll be surprised, I will lie to you. What I will say, though, is that we have gone to a rigorous system where we do focus groups. We started from the AGM in Antigua in last year, in 2023, and we did focus groups. We have a player advisory committee that is led by our director, Shakira Selman, and we have contacted white ball captain Ravman Powell, who is a member, and, of course, Haley Matters, who is a women's captain, and, and congratulations to her as well. She's just been named Cricketer of the Year. Yeah, Haley uh, Matthews, Haley T20 Matthews, International, International Cricketer, Cricketer of the so Year. Very well done to her. So we have made those sort of um, consultations because we are very mindful that we don't have all the knowledge. It, I'm starting from a point where I used to play and serve on the association. So I had that first hand knowledge. I am no longer there. So I am very mindful of the inputs and the, and the, and the inter nuances of a person who is playing. So I'm not surprised. In negotiations, you won't get everything you want. Some members will, will, are very adamant about some things and some are not. So. It's about, it's about um, getting that balance and allowing um, the process to go forward. But we continue the discussions, not because we have signed the MOU doesn't mean discussions are not continuing. Yeah. So we'll continue to have those discussions. Yeah, when the MOU um, started the 1st of October 2023, will end in 2027, are there any retroactive payments or any retroactive aspects of this MOU? Um, are you already operating on the terms of this MOU? Clear that up for us. No, they retracted the, well, October 1. Yeah. So whatever happens between then and now, it goes back to that. That's about it, really. Mm. So in, in terms of, so are you therefore already operating under this agreement, or were you operating under this agreement since October 1 last year? No, we were operating on the whole agreement. Yeah. With the understanding that come October 1, mm -hmm. then whatever adjustments are made, it'll take effect then. So there'll be some retroactive payment for a number of the players. Yeah, whether you, you spoke for about... all the players, really. Yeah, you spoke about the fact that the landscape has changed. Um, and in part of this MOU, you speak to um, the NOCs and that players who are contracted to Cricket West Indies, and you can correct me if I haven't interpreted it correctly, but that players who are contracted to Cricket West Indies and who might be given NOCs to play franchise cricket, that at the points when they have been given permission um, to play franchise cricket, that 
um, they at that stage would not be paid under their CWI agreement. Can you explain that for us? Um, well, it is, it is what we call double dipping, mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you understand it. So if you are allowed to go and earn um, or participate in another um, earning opportunity, then it is um, a natural terms in terms of um, industrial relations that you forego your salary at your original place of employment, pick up your salary where you are earning, and then when you return, you'll start back on that. So I think it's a, a natural practice globally, yeah. and I'm sure the players will understand. Let me get into some um, details then. So let us say I have a white ball contract with Cricket West Indies, um, and a red ball series is happening, um, which I am not a part of, and I get an NOC to go and play in a franchise league, does it still apply in a situation like that? Well, um, once you're not um, available to, to serve within West Indies Street, so I, I don't want to tie to, to, to tournaments or games or matches, but once you're not available, because even though you're a white ball player and you're not a red ball player and there's a red ball series going on, your employers may want you to go and play a white ball tournament in Guyana mm. as a local tournament. So it's about your availability to honor what you would have signed to say is your contract and to be available to serve um, under the terms and conditions of the West Indies um, retainer contract. Yeah, you also mentioned six female players contracted at the regional level. Um, can you explain the significance of that um, uh, and explain exactly what that means in, in further detail? Um, what it means is that during the COVID period, Cricket West Indies made some significant um, steps in in jumping through whoops and getting our women cricketers assembled in, in Antigua for training camps on a month-by-month -month basis. And we found that to be very difficult because we are using the same players every day who have served um, tremendously well, the Stephanie Taylor, the Haley Matthews, um, the Andrew Dutton, who's no longer there. Um, and we th thought that the developmental um, process and, and the, the bedrock of our cricket was not being serviced properly. I think there is also another two steps below that. Under 19 girls in the Caribbean should be given some attention, which is outside of our purview, because they are not um, eligible to be unionized. Mm -hmm. And then at the school level, with, uh, across the Caribbean, which is, I think, maybe Cricket West Indies and the governance, the governments can take up at CARICOM. Um, so because we don't have um, those sort of um, programs and, and, and systems going, we think um, that we should try and retain women cricketers and give them an opportunity to develop because most of our ladies are learning their trade in the international circle. Yeah. They go on the international arena and that's where they're learning. That's like we have the test team in Australia. Yeah. Um, a couple of the guys making their debuts and some guys have five first class game. And I know that feel because I, 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 had to, <laughs> I had to learn on the job and be under the microscope and the scrutiny of our Caribbean cricket lovers yeah. and they are not letting up. They yeah. have no mercy. So and just all... to be clear, these six women are different from those that are contracted at the senior elite level. Yes, so they are, they are different. They were contracted shortly at a regional level, and then you still have your international senior um, women cricketers who are going to be contracted and, of course, be playing their trade. So it is always good to bring them in when you have a, a Ailey Matthews still playing, a Stephanie Taylor, who is in the dressing room, and they can transfer that knowledge, that, that vast amount of experience, and, and share what the scenarios are, mm -hmm. and you can't pay for experience. So if we have those younger cricketers coming through, we should at least give them an opportunity to be a professional cricketer and allow them to, to develop in a, in a, in a very um, structured and systematic way. We're fast running out of time. Make this one quick. Multi-year contracts, um, retainer contracts, that is covered in this MOU, which I find um, quite instructive um, based on utterances that we've heard in recent months about the possibility of franchise leagues um, retaining players over two or three years. Um, I know you're suggesting Cricket West Indies may be doing that as well. Well, um, that is one side of it. People may believe that you're trying to, to secure the players before the franchises externally um, um, would have gone ahead and, and done that. But in the International Labour Organization, ILO, there's a thing called decent work, mm -hmm. where you need to give your, your workers um, job protection and job security and tenure. And it is a good way to do, and some of the benefits of that is that your workers, which are our cricketers, can access the social benefits. So if for Jamaica, where is the National Housing Trust, you could go and, and apply, apply for a mortgage because you have a, a three-year contract that shows that you're gainfully employed for, the, for this period of time. 
You can go and get your health cards for your family. Um, you can go and get um, different things, car loans, and just to access. To, so you have security, and the players can now sit and train and not worry about being appraised and losing a contract and then knowing that they're going to have a job tomorrow. So it is on that back and on that basis that we'd have gone for a multi-year um, contract. That does not stop the player from performing and keeping that contract because if you're not meeting the standards and not meeting the targets, yeah. those contracts can be terminated. Wayne, I'm stealing 20 seconds. From your standpoint, this MOU, how pleased are you with the final product? I'm pretty pleased. Thanks for asking that. I'm pretty pleased. It has been a grueling discussion. I mean, you know, we come here and represent a, a smiling face, but trust me, two words that I could say that I, I would appreciate out of the whole negotiations would be mutual, and mutually respected mm. on both sides, because we had some terrible time stuff. I mean, mm. we argue a lot. I mean, the voice is... We have a bold some bouncers. Yes, and he's not a very quick guy, but he bowled some quick bouncers during that negotiations. But at the same time, there was good mutual respect between both parties and at the end. I'm pretty satisfied and you know we talk about bringing in some players in the negotiations to give them an idea as to what goes on behind the scenes when we negotiate on their behalf, fight for them so they have a better understanding as to what WIPA represents. So you're it was an, fantastic. You're not a track and field man when you're really a cricket uh, man uh, and a uh, test uh, man as well. Can, you don't can, understand 20 Can I make a recommendation? No. Sure. As a union man representing people, I think the staff should be afforded some um, overtime pay for being on the studio so long. The people behind the camera. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> let's take a break. On the sports back zone, wave the lines. Mm, maybe overstepping his boundary. <laughs> Just a little bit. We'll be back.